Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. So today we are going to present on our topic which is cosmetics for acne prone skin. For problem statement, we highlighted two things which is the how does what, uh, acne occurs and the second thing is that how, what are the types of acne. So how does acne forms? Firstly, we need to know that uh, in our skin, there's a lot of uh, hair follicles or pores, which contains uh, sebaceous glands, which, which produces sebum. During adolescence stage, uh, these sebaceous glands will expand and it will uh, produce more sebum. The sebum, which then will mix with the dead skin cells around our skin, will clog the pore uh, or the hair follicles. As the sebum and the uh, dead skin cells build up inside the pore, it will then uh, put pressure around the pore and eventually it will rupture and the, uh, and the sebum with the dead skin cells will spread around the, uh, around the skin. The sebum, which has spread around the area of the uh, pore, uh, contains a bacteria called the P. acnes. P. acnes uses the sebum for their nutrient for growth. When the sebum spreads around the area of the pore, it will cause inflammation and it will uh, show a red bump or what we call as acne. Moving on to the types of acne. Uh, so for the types of acne, we got white heats, black heats, uh, pustules, and cysts or nodules. For white heats, uh, white heats occurs when the sebum and the dead skin cells which has been clogged up in the uh, pore become too compact or thick. While the opening of the pore is narrow, the sebum and the uh, dead skin cells will build up in the pore and it will cause inflammation inside the pore and thus it will cause white heat. For black heats, uh, it is actually quite the same with white heats but the difference is that when the uh, sebum and the dead skin cells clog up the pore and it become compacted and thick, uh, the opening of the pore uh, instead of being closed, it will open and this will cause the pore will look uh, black and thus it will cause black heads. Next is the pustule. The pustule is an acne which uh, contains white blood cells. Uh, as the immune system or the white blood cells fight the uh, P. acnes bacteria in the sebum, uh, it sometimes uh, it will pile up and it will create a pus. This pile up white blood cells or pus is the one we call as pustules in our acne. The last type of acne would be the nodules or cysts. Uh, this is the type of acne that will actually uh, hurt when touched. These types of acne occurs when the uh, infection that has already occurred around the skin gets wider and deeper into the skin. This is the actual reason why we shouldn't actually touch our acne because when we touch our acne, it will actually spread the infection wider and eventually it will go deeper into our skin and this it will cause these uh, types of acne which is the nodules or cysts. Next, let's take a look at benzoyl peroxide. Peroxide available in over-the-counter gels, cleansers and spot treatment. It is an organic compound that has the chemical formula C14H10O4. It comes in different concentration for milk to moderate breakouts. It is also effectively get rid of bacteria and dead skin cells that clog your pores. Benzoyl peroxide has a potent antibacterial action when applied it penetrates deeply in the skin, killing the propionibacterium acnes. As propionibacterium acnes are killed, inflammation resolves its keratolytic properties, exfoliate the skin and help the dead skin cells clog the hair follicle to loosen and shed. Acrylic copolymer contains glycerin, reduce dryness and hydrates, and also surface seaboard. Benzoyl peroxide are peeling, swelling, several itching or burning, several stinging or redness. Take a look at precautions. C14H10O4 is an explosive flammable chemical. It is an irritant which can cause swelling. It is also highly reactive and open contact with skin. Moving on, we have retinol. Retinol is known as vitamin A1 alcohol. It varies in different strengths. Um, for starters, it's advisable to use a low percentage of a mere 0.3%. And for seasoned users, 2% of supercharged serums will get results faster. It also can be mixed with moisturizers. When spread on the skin, retinoids can unclog pores allowing other medicated creams and gels to work better. It also reduces acne outbreaks by preventing dead cells from clogging pores. Benefits of retinol include treats acne, 
keeping pores from clogging, works on fine lines, scars and wrinkles, brightens dull skin, revealing brighter, smoother skin, and fades dark spots, sunspots, acne scars, and hyperpigmentation. First off, let's establish what salicylic acid is. It's a little complicated, but the exact structure of salicylic acid is important in explaining why and how it works so well on our skin. When it comes to skincare products, there are two classes of acids you will see often. The first one is BHAs or beta-hydroxy acids and the other one is alpha-hydroxy acids or well known as AHAs. Salicylic acid is a beta-hydroxy acid. It belongs to a class of ingredients called salicylate. So this is where it gets fun. This structure is important because it makes salicylic acid more all soluble so it can penetrate into the pores of the skin. Generally, skin soluble ingredients penetrate through the lipid layers between the skin cells more readily. The chemical equation for the formation of salicylic acid is acetyl salicylic acid react with water to form acetic acid and salicylic acid. The cells in the lining of hair follicle of people with acne tend to multiply quickly and stick to one another. When your pores get plugged with dead skin cells and oils, blackheads, whiteheads or pimples often appear. Salicylic acid penetrates into your skin and works to dissolve the dead skin cells clogging your pores. It can take several weeks of use for you to see its full effect. Salicylic acid works by dissolving this cement that holds those sticky cells together in the clogged pores. Although salicylic acid is considered safe overall, it may remove too much oil resulting in dryness and potential irritation. Skin reactions such as skin tingling, itching, peeling of the skin and hives may occur, especially at the start of the treatment. Many people using this medication do not have serious side effects but the reaction of skin on applied areas might be mild tingling sensation and greater sun sensitivity. Let your doctor know if you have experienced allergic reactions towards salicylic acid or other topical medications before. When using in children, children may be at more risk of skin irritation because their skin absorbs salicylic acid at a higher rate than adults. Salicylic acid should not be used on children under the age of 2. Certain medications do not interact well with salicylic acid. Let your doctor know what medications you are currently taking. When using salicylic acid, there are some things that you should not do. Firstly, do not apply salicylic acid products to large areas of your body. Secondly, do not use for long periods of time. And lastly, do not use under airtight dressings such as plastic wrap. Hello everyone, let us move on to the last cosmetic products, hyaluric acid. Hyaluric acid is one of the most important molecules or substance that you can find in cosmetic products, where it is also one of the top three building blocks in your dermis. Dermis is below the epidermis, which is responsible for aging. So we are talking like fine lines and wrinkles on our skin. In the dermis, we have collagen, elastin, and also hyaluric acid. They are all made by cells called the fiberglass. So what happened with time? As time goes by, with the sun damage and smoking, all of these constituents which make up the foundation of dermis will get degraded. So hyaluric acid on your, on your dermis will decrease with time. And hence, that is why replenishing your body's natural sources of hyaluric acid can give you rejuvenation. Moving on, why is hyaluric acid so amazing? First off, hyaluric acid helps with hydration and lubrication. For your information, hyaluric acid can hold up to 1,000 times its own weight in water. When you apply it onto your skin, what it will do is pull all the moisture in the air and deposit onto your skin to rehydrate. Since dehydrated skin accentuates the fine lines and wrinkles on your skin, hyaluric acid is the best to use as it solves the dehydration, making them way less obvious. And the last reason hyaluric acid is not irritating for most people. Lastly, precaution. One of the issues with hyaluric acid is that it can dry your skin if there is no moisture in the air to pull from. So it is not suitable for those who are living somewhere really dry and no humidity as in a desert. 
The side effects, even though it's pretty unlikely to cause any type of allergic reaction, it still might cause some inflammation to some people. How do we apply in the right way? So after cleansing, toning or essence, ideally your skin will become a little bit damp. You just need to squeeze out a couple of drops, two or three is enough. After you apply the hyaluronic acid, wait for a couple of minutes for it to absorb and then you can apply a moisturizer on top of it. When can we apply hyaluronic acid? It really depends on yourself. You can apply it day and night or you can apply it only when you feel your skin feels dehydrated. Lastly, conclusion. Acne is an exceedingly common skin disease and it can have detrimental physical and psychological impact on the lives of vulnerable teenagers, although it doesn't directly threaten them. To, pre to, pre to prevent this from ongoing, health education should ensure that patients have clear knowledge about the causes of acne as well as reasonable expectations about the time and possible treatment outcomes. Better education and treatment should also be offered to the patients by medical personnel and other practitioners are central to continuity, as it will enable them to handle themselves more effectively. Thank you for listening.